Welcome to another MechWorks PDM quick introduction video. Today, we're going to look at branching workflows and dynamic workflow states. My name is Glenn, and I'll be your presenter today. So today, we're going to look at the following topics. First off, branching from one workflow to another. This is achieved by having a specific data field configured by the administrator that would define which workflow to branch to. The dynamic workflow states are states that have been configured in the current workflow process where those specific states can be bypassed. And the workflows we're looking at today are linear workflows. And a linear workflow are those that travel from one state to another, but only proceed when the signee from the previous state approves the document or documents. So let's go over into the MechWorks PDM and take a look at what we're talking about today. The user here has the MechWorks PDM browser open and it's integrated with the 3D CAD system seamlessly. And the first thing the user is going to do is select this document here, which is in an engineering change process. And we're not going to go into a lot of detail today on the engineering change process as it is covered in its own webinar. But as the user goes to the EC tab here, we can see this has an initial release already created for it. So the user is going to select that. And with this form here came up as uneditable. So we're just going to select edit, which made this an editable form. So the first thing we do here is just submit this to a workflow. And let's take a look at this workflow. A pretty simple one. This is the starting workflow because what we're going to look at today is going from this workflow and branching to another workflow. So it goes to the design checker and then to the document control. So the design checker can take a look at the document and make sure that it has all the relevant information in it. For instance, whether this is a military document or not. So we're just going to say no on this one. And the type of document that we have here, which workflow we want this to branch to. And we can go in here and we can say mechanical. And at this stage, the design checker looked at the document, looked at all the information on it, and could either reject it, which is out of workflow, out of workflow and terminate this IR form, or place on a manual hold. Placing on a manual hold shows everybody that you're looking at the document, you haven't ignored it, and you're sorting out what needs to happen. But in this case, the user is going to say approve onto this document control. Now it's in the document control. The document control person may need to check to say, yes, this is a mechanical document. It's not a military one. All the information that they need to approve or reject. And when they approve it, it's going to branch to the relevant workflow. In this case, it's going to be a mechanical one. So we'll select Approve. And here it's showing the mechanical workflow that it branched into. And this has a couple of interesting things about it. Obviously, this is in a linear workflow. So it goes to the mechanical shop, over to the material handling. And then we have this military standard state here. And this state is a dynamic state in which it has been created by the administrator for this workflow that it can bypass this state if, in fact, it's not a military document. And then on to the engineering manager. And of course, the first thing the mechanical shop person can do is, as always, reject it or approve it. And what we're going to do in this case is we're going to go ahead and approve this document to the material handling. Now remember, this is a linear workflow. So it doesn't go to the next state until the previous state 
has signed off on it. And so in this case, the material handling is going to take a look at it. And of course, at any time, the user could go through, could look at the documents that are going through this approval process. In this case, it's the part and the drawing. So at any time, the user could go into here and actually open up the file, take a look at it, and make sure that everything is the way that user wants it. You could check the dimensions, the title block, and the revisioning. And let's go back and continue with the workflow here. Um, so the material handling, just like any other state, can reject it back to the previous state, out of the workflow, out of the workflow and terminate, place it on a hold. In this case, the material handling is going to approve this to this mill standard. Now remember, right now, it's showing that this document is not a military standard document. So we'll just select that and go forward to that. So it's going to give this option to the user. So the user could go ahead and unselect and select OK. And you can see that it moved directly on to the engineering manager. It bypassed the military standard state. So of course, then the engineering manager could go ahead and approve to the end. So here it is all the way to the end. And we can see that it released this document. And the data form here is no longer editable because it's completed the workflow. You can see it has an event log that shows all the different states that it went through and when they went through the dates, the time, and it collected the signatures as it went through this workflow. So let's close this one. And what we're going to do now is look at another document we have here. And it's this electrical document, which is also in the engineering change process. So again, if we go to the EC tab here, this is the IR form, and we'll view the record. And again, we'll make it editable. And so far, it has not been submitted to a workflow. So we'll submit this to the beginning workflow that has been configured for this system. And we're going to take a look at the workflow. So it's the beginning workflow. So it has the design checker, and then onto the document control. So again, here, the design checker is just going to approve it, move it on. And then the document control person can decide which workflow it should branch to next. So it could select the drop down here, select electrical. This one is a military document. And again, the user here could go ahead and open up the document. In this case, it's an AutoCAD file. And then it could look at the document, make sure the relevant information is there. And when they're convinced with that, they can close it. And so it has the electrical, has the military standards. So the user at the docking control is going to approve this document. So now this workflow is going to branch into the electrical workflow. And so this one's a little bit different than mechanical, you can see. So it's going to the electrical shop. Again, as always, can reject it or approve it, take a look at the documents see what's going on with them, look at the record cards, see all the relevant information there, what's going on with the properties, and then all the information is presented to the users in the workflow process. So we can close that. And now that person can go ahead and say, OK, I'm going to approve it. Now this time, it says a military standard document. So at this next military state, we want it to go there. So if we select Approve to that, and this time we're going to say, yes, we need it to go to that state. And now it's in the military state. So of course, in here, you can see the decision makers that can sign off on this. So we'll select OK. And we're going to approve it onto the engineering manager. And then, of course, the engineering manager can take a look at everything, make sure everything is correct and go ahead and approve it themselves.
So, of course, that document then was released. So it's a released document. And again, it's gone all the way through. It's collected the signatures, the date, the time, all the relevant information in there. And it has the log of where it went through all the different states and where it branched from this workflow to the next workflow. Everything is at everybody's fingertips as it goes through and collects the information on the different states and signees. So let's just close this. And again, we can see this has gone all the way through and has been released. So that is real quickly going through this process. And what we're going to do now is just go back to the PowerPoint and finish up this presentation. OK, so today what we looked at is the branching of workflows, where you start off in the one workflow and based on a database field to which workflow you're going to branch into next. In today's example, we just looked at it going from the starting workflow, either branching to the mechanical workflow or an electrical workflow. Obviously, this is configurable and can meet whatever needs that you have within your organization. So I want to thank you for your time today. If you have any questions, please let us know. We would welcome the opportunity to provide a full product demonstration. We can detail that to your organization's needs. Just give us a call at 1-800-573-6183, extension 701, or email us at sales at na-ips.com, or see us on the web at na-ips.com. Thank you again, and this is Glenn. Until next time, goodbye.